Hi, welcome back to my workbench. Today I'm going to be taking a look at what's inside an LM8 UU bearing and going to be packing it with some white lithium grease, in this case from Lucas, because it's what's available cheap here from the big box retailers. I also had a bit of a cold filming this, so please excuse any weird anomalies in there. I'm also taking a look at the LM8 UU style IGUS bearings. These are only 15 millimeters, so they present some challenges as far as getting them correctly loaded up. You can't just put them in anything that fits a standard LM8 UU because they're one millimeter smaller on their outer diameter. So that's kind of interesting. And I'll take a quick look at how this spun out on the rod. I, I need to do more work on these, frankly. I don't think they're quite tight enough for the application, but the rods being a little missized sometimes actually causes a probably more of a problem with these than anything else. So that might ultimately be an issue with cheap rods, although this one's from a printer. It's actually 8mm, strangely enough. The ones on the Prusa i3 Mark III weren't exactly 8mm, and that's what caused me a bit of difficulty there. All right, let's see what's inside the bearing, and uh, pack it with some grease, and then take a look at these, and then go over where they're going on the printer. And if you like these videos, please subscribe down below and give us a thumbs up. Please leave any comments you have if you have any complaints or any comment about uh, anything in here that uh, you've got some better knowledge than I do on, that's certainly possible. So please leave a comment and uh, start a discussion on it. Thanks. All right, welcome back to Workbench. It's been a long couple of months. Came down with a nasty cold and just couldn't seem to shake it. But I'm back and working on things again. It's been a while. Well, lots of other stuff going on here too, but currently what I'm doing is getting these bearings cleaned up so I can put them in my Prusa i3 Mark III had had an unfortunate accident, and uh, it's worse for the wear at the moment, but never fear, it'll be back together. What I noticed was when I was taking it apart, the bearings were a little noisy, and I felt like I should probably replace those, or really, I was looking at them and they were just completely ungreased, they're not packed with anything in there. I probably can't see that too well, but they're not actually packed with grease when they shipped them out originally. Uh, these days they're giving you a grease packet with them. I was watching this old Tony and he had a grease packet in with his, which was nice. They included that with mine. I probably would have thought to grease them. I might have thought to grease them anyway, but uh, didn't actually do it. Probably ran out of time. So what I'm doing with these is just cleaning them up a bit with some 90% alcohol, which is basically unobtainable at this point. So probably shouldn't be using it for this, but I'll save it and reuse it later for cleaning other stuff. And then I'm going to pack them with grease, so hopefully they'll be a little better on the rods. And I'll test them against the original ones. Also interestingly, I've got some... Also kind of interesting, I've got some bearings for these, so I can repack the bearings into them if I want to. The, uh, the actual balls for the bearings. I bought five pounds of them from some seller that didn't understand quite what they weighed. Uh, they were about... Uh, $8, whatever wholesale was, on, on a pound of ball bearings, which was awesome. And they cost about $0.30 cents to ship. Uh, after I purchased them, they no longer cost $0.30 cents to ship. It was the same $8, $9, whatever it was for the bearings. But uh, shipping had gone up to, I think, $30 or $40, which was a little more reasonable considering where they were coming from. But I got the bearings in the meantime, so I can actually set these with some new bearings, although I'm not sure how well the shielding's going to come off on these. That's the problem with the LM8 you use. They're, they're double-sided shielding. These are just rubber shields with a, uh, I think they usually have a metal, metal shim underneath them to hold them rigidly in place. So, while that's cleaning up, I'm actually going to see if I can get one of these apart. I ordered 12 of them, along with assorted other bearings. It's supposedly all the bearings and tooling needed for a Prusa i3 Mark III and the belts too. Which was weird because this was slightly less expensive to get 12 LM8 UU bearings in than just ordering the bearings on their lonesome. Strange times. At one point I had a method for taking these apart that was pretty reliable. Getting the uh, shield pinched out of them so you could well, they're not specifically put new bearings in them, but so you could mess around with the element you use 
without utterly destroying them and then I thought I had it down to where I could reuse the reuse the shielding too but uh, I'm guessing these aren't going to comply also it may have been a slightly different bearing too might not have been the UU double shielded so there's that if I picked it out I'm guessing I'm going to destroy this utterly but uh, we can take a look inside while I'm cleaning up the other bearings oh, there we go let's see if I can get off without destroying it I think I might have just destroyed it. Maybe not. Hey, hey, oh, hey, eh, eh, eh. There we go. Yeah, there's the metal shielding surface. Although it's not all the way around. See, it's missing the uh, shielding right here. So maybe that's designed like that. Because I don't see it anywhere in here. So I'm guessing that's... Uh, as designed. Did it leave gunk? No, it didn't leave gunk. That's just the press fit. Yep, there we go. So this is actually the runner for the bearing. I forget exactly what those are called, but it's the plastic tray that the bearings, the little ball bearings, sit in to make the make the assembly. And there we go. Yep, losing bearings already. Don't know which side those came out of, so this is probably a wash. Of course, I can add up all the bearings, then I can figure out exactly how many are in each race and put them back together. There's that. I, I might just reassemble this for fun, so let me take it apart. And we'll get all of the bearings out and then count them up and reassemble it. Also, I'm curious if it's got the correct number of bearings in it or if it's missing some or whatever eh, it'd be kind of neat to find out so let's see there you go that's actually what the inner race of an LM8 UU bearing looks like and there's the inside of the inside of the assembly and there's our shield from one of the sides missing a bit of metal on it Although, maybe that's intentional. Never looked at it that closely before. Looks like there is some schmoo in there. That might just be shipping grease. Let's see. Eh. Feels a bit rough, but I'm not sure if that's the inner surface of the shield, of the, rather, the cartridge, or if that's the grit in there. Eh, that, I don't know. That's not great. That feels kind of gritty. Let me get a Kleenex. Maybe I can see if it's something in there. Yeah, that doesn't look great. I, I, I'd say clean any of these before you use them. That's, uh, yeah, that looks pretty nasty. Not, not the worst. It's not like I'm pulling actual sand out of here, but it does look kind of just gritty, like shipping, shipping grease from the assembly process. Not so much, uh, not so much anything you'd want to use for lubrication. Alright, there's all the bearings out. Let me get the ball bearings account quick. And see if it's an even number with the number of races we have. Which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. So, yeah, it should be a multiple of 4 and an even number. So I separated them out into groups of 10. And it looks like we're missing one bearing. Because there's five of them here. Should be 96 probably. And there's there's actually 95. So, there you go. I'll probably reassemble this with 96 of the bearings I have over there. And uh, see if I can get that back together again. In the meantime, I'm going to be cleaning out these. I'll let this sit for a little bit and come back in probably a half hour. And after shaking it a little bit. And uh, then see how those are doing. Again, that's 91%. Alcohol, you're just uh, letting it be a solvent in there and, and clean up any of the uh, shipping gunk. And then I'll press fit some grease with a rod into the bearings and uh, that'll hopefully make them run a little smoother on the Prusa. All right, back in a few. Okay, so it's sometime later. I'm just going to finish cleaning these off quick. I don't have anything lint-free to run through the center of them, so 
I'll have to give these a few more minutes to let them dry out on the uh, ball bearings. But I'm just going to get as much liquid as I can off them and then uh, let them dry a little bit further. They're already actually a little better than the other ones, I think, on the rod. Those seem to be sliding both uh, a little bit more freely and uh, with a little less noise. When they were in the, the alcohol, I ran through the rod a little bit too, just to help get any uh, crud that was on the ball bearings or any, you know, oil that had collected up on the underside, just to help get it out of there. So I'm going to let these dry for another, I don't know, say half hour. So they're just completely dried out. And then I'll run some lithium grease through them with you. And uh, we'll take a look at these work any better on the rods than these older bearings that I just took out of there. And these, they already sound, nah, they sound about the same, but they seem to run better on the rod that I put out for testing. So we'll see. And we're back. All the bearings have been cleaned out. So now I'm ready to pack them with grease. I don't think I'm actually going to use the original bearings off it. I think I'm going to replace them with the cheap replacement bearings that I got. They look okay. They seem to glide on the rails at least as well as the originals. Maybe better, maybe not. I can't really tell. Seems okay. Seems a little looser in tolerance, if anything. Also, I found that the rods on my Prusa i3 Mark III weren't quite 8mm. They were about the same as this one which apparently have in the wrong mode. They're about the same as this, which came in at uh, about 7 point, uh, 7.95, 7.8, somewhere around there. 7.9. Let's see here. Let's throw that out again. So there's a bit of a tolerance issue on this, but this one checked out at about 7.9 across the length, and that's about the same as my Prusa i3 Mark III is. So this is what I'm going to use to check them against. And that seems to slide okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and pack up the bearings now. I've got white lithium grease. Lucas comes cheap in a large container. So to pack them, all you do is press some lithium grease into the bearing. Hold the back end and then press the bearing grease in until it squeezes out. And that seems like it's packed, but we'll put a little more in just to make sure and then I'll clean it all up. There we go. Yep, that's fine. Now I'm just going to clean this mess up quick and that bearing will be fine. Repeat that five times and I should have a bearing set to reinstall. We'll take a quick look at how they operate after I put them back on. Actually, we can take a look at putting them back on, I suppose, and then how they operate. And back to my mess of a 3D printer. So I had installed IGUS bushings on the Z-axis because they had a little more play on them already and it didn't really matter that much. They're just what I happened to have on hand at the time when I needed to replace the bearings that were in there with something. So that's what I used. And they've worked okay, but this really needs to be designed to apply more pressure to the bushing if you want to use those and it's uh, it's not the it's not the worst actually this rod is the one that's off a bit and so is the other z-axis rod so really I don't I don't think it made much of a difference as far as the print quality went or as far as any kind of performance with the printer went let's see if I can get these out though uh, they've been installed in there for quite some time here's the haggises I'd been using they look pretty good where I didn't uh, smash them hammering them off. I didn't see any real noticeable wear on them. They had still been fitting snugly on the on the Z-Rod. And, uh, yeah, they, they seem to be working as well as the bearings anyway. The Z-Rod, the size on it is, is fairly far off, I found. It's about 0.1 millimeter difference uh, over over the length of it. It's, it's off in spots. Sometimes it's 0.15 off. Sometimes it's 0.5 off. So it's it's variable, but the, with the with the clamping force of the Z-axis holder for these, they appear to be working okay. So, just my two cents on using the eye just for the Z-axis. And those had been on there for, I don't know, about a year and a half. So, pretty good. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of packing the 
bearings with some grease for the Precise 3 Mark III. This is, wow. So that was the easy part. Assembling this thing is going to be a pain, but once it's back up and running, we'll, we'll see how it works next time. Thanks for watching. See you next time.